Boy, the hot one today. Got some cool stuff to do today. I'm here. Yay, let's have a fucking parade. Lovely. So in today's info vlog, I'm gonna do a little rebuilding tip on the T55 speed transmission. I'm gonna show you how to reseal it properly using the new chemicals that are out on the market today. This will work for both the world class and the non world class T55 speed used in a variety of makes and models like Mustangs, Jeeps, Camaros, TVRs, you name it. So check this video out. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Let's start with the small stuff first. This is your fill and drain plugs. This is the plug I use for the top cover. And this is your reverse light switch. If you kind of notice, this reverse light switch that I took out already has some sort of Teflon coating on it. I use a thread sealant from Dynatex. It's a Teflon coated thread sealant. I use it on all my fill and drain plugs and my reverse light switches. So I'm going to put that sealant on these pieces and let it set up. What I'll do is I'll put a little dab of this on the threads and then I kind of go over with my fingers, okay? You can use it very sparingly. If you look at these fill and drain plugs, they already have some sort of sealant on them from the factory. So usually, you really don't need to use this stuff if it's a one-shot deal, but a lot of plugs do not have sealant on them. So just dip, put some of it on here. And again, kind of work it in with your fingers. This 3 8 flared fitting I use to block off the neutral safety switches and T5 top covers. So you really, you won't have this in a normal T5, but in this particular job, I use it. Now what I would suggest you're going to do, if you're going to be doing a lot of this work, don't use the brush that's in the, the container. Get a little smaller brush. With T5, it's all about prep. This is a thread locking gel from Dynatex, okay? And what happens is it's a pump type gel, so you can pump this stuff and put little dabs on your bolts. See? I really like that. So the front bearing retainer bolts, you need to put sealant on them. So if you notice the front retainer bolt did have some sealant on it in the past, okay? Like a thread locker sealant. So you just do the same thing, put it on there. I love this pump stuff because it's nice and clean and you don't have to worry about tubes. This is like a sealant thread locker, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm getting all my hardware prepared first before I assemble a unit. Again, that's this uh, thread locker gel from Dynatex. Really works well. Okay, so all the pieces that I have that require some sort of pre-prep well, the reverse light switch, fill and drain plug, that little plug I put in the top cover, and the forefront bearing retainer bolts. So as far as rubber seals go, the T5 usually has a rear seal, a front seal, several different types, and a little O-ring for the top cover. Now there are two types of front seals. The one on my left is a Chicago rawhide seal. It's a metal clad seal. That means the outside of it is metal, and it has like a paint finish on it that's a sealant. And this is what's called a rubber clad seal. The whole outside of the seal is rubber. I like the rubber clad seals. That's what the factory used. But the metal clad seals tend to fit better, especially in the iron retainers. And I like using these metal clad seals in all my rebuilds. So you don't have to do anything to these or the seal other than just press them in the front bearing retainer. So I use a little seal driver to drive the seal in.
You want to make sure that the outside edge of the seal is nice and flush with the inside of the front bearing retainer. Okay, now once that's done, and it looks good like this, you want to put some lubricant in the seal. So there's a spring over here, and you want to make sure you don't pop the spring out. So I use that Dynatex assembly gel. I'm using this assembly gel again. I love using Dynatex products. They're not paying me for this shit or anything. Just something I like using. So I'll pack the whole seal with assembly lube, all right? This keeps the seal lubricated and keeps that spring from coming out. Most T5 rear seals have flanges at the end of them. And so again, I'm going to use some of that assembly lube and I'm going to go push it all inside here, the inside of the seal, to keep that spring from popping out and also keep the seal lubricated. Now, some metal clad rear seals, they don't really have a lot of sealant on them. This almost just looks like paint, okay? So again, I'm going to take some of that anaerobic gel and squirt it on the seal in places. Then I'm going to just take my finger and smooth it out like this. Now the reason why I coat this like this is because sometimes extension housings may have a little bit of an imperfection or a groove cut in the side and that'll allow oil to kind of go around the outside of the housing and go around the seal. So by putting some coating on the seal like this, if this has got a little mark in it or a little indentation, the oil can't escape around the seal and outside and leak. So you're going to put the seal on it like this Okay, and I'm going to use another seal driving tool. Basically, this is a, a bearing drive that I reverse, okay? It's something from Harbor Freight. You can use it for driving bearing cups and flip it around and drive seals in. You can see the way the sealant squashes out, which is what I like to see. And, of course, clean it up. Right, the major surfaces of the T5 5-speed do not require any type of gasket at all. In fact, the reason why they're kind of rough like this is so there is some tooth for the sealant to bite up against. Now, the factory T5 uses a fast cure black RTV type sealant, which is also made by this company Dynatex. Okay, it comes in a quick kind of aerosol setup. So what you do is you break this tab off like this. It's like a safety tab. Once you break the tab off, pop this top off, flip it around 90 degrees. So now it's on these little bumps here, okay? So when this presses down, you see the sealant will come right out. I put some gloves on just in case I get some sealant on my hands. But basically you want to do about a sixteenth of an inch bead. You want to do as smallest bead as possible. You just kind of squeeze this down, okay? And drag it across. And what's nice about having this little nozzle like this is that you can move and focus on the bead rather than trying to squeeze with your fingers. I'm applying very little pressure on this. That looks nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and circle all these bolt holes as well, all right? Let's get it moving. This really makes life a lot easier. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll go around the bolt holes.
Now because these beads have some sort of viscosity to them, you can almost lift the bead up and pull it around. Now, the reason why I go around the bolt holes is because I also want it to be a thread locker. What you don't want to do is get the sealant in the holes of the bolt because it can actually create a hydraulic ram and blow the case apart. I've seen that happen. In other words, if I put the sealant in the hole, as the bolt goes in, the sealant has nowhere to go and actually creates a crack in the case. So be very careful that you don't get sealant in the holes too much. And the factory gets it in the holes, but your idea is to minimize that effect. Now the top cover, you want to make sure that the pin is in the middle position, like this. And you want to flop it down. Okay? What you want to do is get it over that and down. Once you're in, you take your dowel bolts and catch them. You can put the rest of your bolts in now. Dynatex recommends that you tighten these bolts within five minutes after applying sealant. I use a torque wrench on these and I torque them down to 80 inch pounds. So now you can see that you got some of this that's squeezed out. You want to go over it while it's wet and clean it up with some paper towel. Nice and clean looking. All T5 top covers have an O-ring that goes at the end of the cover and it locates it, the cover into the extension housing. You could use just some assembly lube to kind of grease the O-ring so it goes in easily into the extension housing. All right, it's easy enough. All right. When working on any T5 5-speed, always apply sealant to the tail housing and not the case. Because this is actually the piece that's going to be sealing. And sometimes on the case, you don't know exactly where it's going to rest against. So always do the tail housing. So use the same techniques that you use on the case with this stuff very carefully. Bring it around. Try to keep somewhat centralized in the, in the casting surface. Right? Is this way that the bead will spread out equally? And let's go around all our bolt holes. Now these two upper holes, the bolts go into the casting and can leak. So you may want to put some sealant on those bolts as well, on those upper bolts. Those are the only two bolts in any T5. Again, these two bolt holes over here that actually go into the case and are not blind. Let's do this here like this. Okay, I'm making sure I got every bolt hole covered.
Now, if I look like I'm a little thin over here, maybe just add a little bit more here. But not much is needed. Put some assembly lube in the shifter box on the pattern plate, and I'm going to drop my 3 8 ball in the neutral position there, okay? If you can see that ball over there. So now what I do is I take my offset lever and the detent spring and I put it in here with some grease like this. I'm going to lay it on here, okay, and I'm going to put the whole extension assembly and slide it into the top cover and into the transmission. I also put a little bit of lubricant on the fifth reverse rail. I have a reverse brake system on here. I line it up with this hole over here because that's where it's going to go into the main case. Catching my bolts. Now, my particular custom transmission that I'm doing here uses cap screws, but the normal uh, bolts are 15 millimeter head, 10 millimeter bolt, okay? All right, so I leave the two top bolts out, okay? Because I want the sealant when I compress this extension housing to squeeze a little bit around the bolt holes. To act as seals, okay? I want the sealant to actually go into those little holes to help seal those bolts. And I can actually look in here, and I'm looking in here right now, and I can see that the sealant has protruded into those holes, which is exactly what I want. Then I run these bolts in. Now I know that they'll be sealed. These are all going to get torqued down to 25 foot pounds. Start with the middle bolts and work your way out to the outside. Now that you've got your tail housing in place, I usually take a punch to make sure that my dowel pin hole is clear. Punch the dowel pin in. Put some assembly lube on the shifter cup. Press it in place. You want to put some lube in there so the shifter has something to go against. All right, so I got the cup in here and the pin in there. Very important. All right, for the front bearing retainer, we've already got our seal in here. Put the shim. I've already built this most of this unit before, okay? So if you want to learn more about T5s, go to the link in the description and get the book. So I've got the bearing race and I've got the shim in the front bearing retainer. Now I'm going to put some of that sealant on this, same fashion. The retainer only usually seals right in this area over here, okay? So you just really have to put sealant in this area like this. Then if you want, just as a safety measure, go on the outside. That's funny how this stuff sticks to 
cast iron a lot differently than aluminum. Now here, it can't really squeeze out into the transmission. It's just going to squeeze outside of it. So there's going to be a lot of cleanup on this one. T5 front bearing retainers have oil return holes. The larger hole faces towards the bottom. And that's going to go in this way on the bottom side over here. Just kind of eye up your bottom return and eye up your holes where they have to align. And just kind of squeeze it by hand and let the ceiling kind of come out. So I'm going to put these bolts in now that have the uh, red thread locker gel on them, okay? These bolts get torqued down to 18 foot-pounds. Sometimes it's a little awkward with the wrench trying to get the camera in. Show you what I'm doing, okay? But you get the idea. Again, it doesn't matter so much the squeezing out part because nothing can go inside the transmission. So I'm gonna, I'll clean that up. But in the meantime, while I'm at it, I'll put in that fitting over here that I put that sealant on it, the, uh, the thread sealant. I'll put the fill and drain plugs in. Then I'll put the backup light switch on. My JT5 has a special speedometer, a sleeve that's an insert. And again, I use that anaerobic gel on the fitting to seal it against the case. You can also use it on the little vent cap. So I hope you enjoyed that video on sealing up the T5 5-speed transmission. I think that transmission came out pretty cool. If you want to learn in detail on how to rebuild a T5 world-class gearbox, 
I have a book out called Building and Modifying High Performance Manual Transmissions. It's available autographed directly from my website. Use the coupon code, you'll get $5 off, and I'll get it right out to you. Now I need to ask you a really big favor. If you notice on my videos, I don't run any ads. I hate ads, and I'm sure you do too, right? So I also don't get products for free. I have to pay for everything 100%. So if you can at least hit that share button below, share it on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever you can, that would mean the world to me. Again, thanks for watching. Please share.